Here's a Beast from 1967 Magnavox cartridge recorder. It's in a brown vinyl case, carrying case, which is missing its strap. And on that strap, you would have put your Magnavox microphone. And I end up not liking these styles because it's fine if you had the strap and you were carrying it over your shoulder. Maybe you were a reporter or something and you could put your microphone out in front of you and reach down your side and press your buttons. But, of course, that's not how I use or would use these. I'd lay it flat. And you're laying it flat. In this orientation, your reading is backwards. You might have your volume button here, but all these are upside down. So I don't end up liking that orientation. But as you can see, um, you have your record lock button available, your battery meter and record level meter available, your volume, your basic controls, play, fast, forward, rewind, and stop. There's no pause. You would use your microphone for pause I guess. It does have that. Start and stop. Um, the spot to put your strap on if it come with one and an external power jack. And it is marked cartridge recorder. Kind of dates it. So let's take it out of the case here. Which is in not too bad a condition. It hasn't totally broken all apart yet, but like all these, it's going to head that direction. I like the brown. Normally you get these recorders in there, just black. I do like the brown. So if I'm going to use it like this, which is the way I would do it, everything's upside down because I'm not carrying it. But it's a uh, sort of a brown plastic, not unattractive and maybe beige we probably have maybe a two and a half or three inch speaker under here turning it over so this is the Magnavox 1 TC 108M it runs on five C cells as most of the equipment back in the day did. You can see some of the label there. Not all of it. Maybe we'll uh, open it up later and see if we can see more inside. So pretty uh, generic. Um, you have, once again, I'm upside down, so we'll turn it over. You have a spot for your um, earphone, auxiliary input, your mic, and its remote jack. And of course over here, I didn't notice this the very first time. When I looked at this machine over, you have a 704, and all the Japanese manufacturers back in the day had a certain number. The 704 was Sanyo's, so. and they all kind of look alike. These and the Bell and Howells and all the ones they made kind of look alike. We have a clear plastic cover, and a little mirror so you can tell how much tape you've got remaining. I want to make sure I'm right side up. And then you have your Magnavox logo. I've always kind of liked that logo and other things. Along with the recorder at the estate sale, I got the, they had the original, or an original um, power jack from 
Magnapar Company, Greenville, Tennessee, service parts division of the Magnavox Company. So there you go. AC external so power, power supply adapter. Got a lot of cord burn on it there over the years. Three watts. Kind of nice when you have the original branded power supplies. I don't want to look at the microphone for a minute. Came in this nice brown vinyl carrying case, branded Magnavox. A couple of places to strap it onto the carrying handle, carrying cord, um, carrying strap, I guess. Mark Japan. And here's the microphone itself. It's branded Magnavox. Same, pretty much the same as color as the recorder. It's a remote switch, dynamic mic. And on the back we have our 704 again and our impedance. 704 being Sanyo. But here's kind of an oddity. I noticed that on both places on the plug, if you look closely, although it's the lettering is upside down. Well, now we'll turn. I'll turn it right. You can maybe make out mic and RSW, which I guess is remote switch. And on the other side, same thing. Mic RSW. Yet this one has up. Well, if you're carrying this thing with this at the top. And this up, that's not right. That's bass backwards, as they used to say in the Air Force. So it has to be this way. They're marked on both sides, but it's only going to work on one side. This side needs to be what I would call up. Once again, it's getting this orientation of these is very confusing. I think might have even confused Magnavox <clears throat> or it's just confusing me more let me uh, get some power to it alright one thing I noticed is I went to plug in the power that this is a little mini plug style power jack plug whereas my memory is that my other Sanyo machines are barrel plugs I'm not sure on that but either way Let's see it's nice when you get these in the meters and everything works and tell that the amplifier works. You can look in and see the erase and play record heads there. Nothing fancy. I don't think this was a very expensive machine back in the day. Well, anybody who had one was kind of advanced. A lot of people were probably still using, for the type of things these were used for, they were probably still using small reel-to-reel -reel units. Yeah, there was no tape in it, so rewind's not going to do anything. Fast forward, done lock. It also came with this um, foot pedal, which we'll look at here in a second. I think. Well, there's the 704, which certainly indicates it's a Sanyo machine.
Fast rewind. Fast forward, which does not lock. Testing the voice recording of the small Magnavox shoebox style cassette recorder. It has a uh, remote access mic. Sort of brown and beige. Very standard equipment for that time. So let's see if uh, we got anything. Is there typical poor audio recording quality maybe we'll try some sort of input all right let's try a little output from the zoom see if uh, the recorder likes it we have that volume set pretty high on the output. It might be too loud, I might be overdriving it. But in general I've noticed these old style cassette recorders tend to like a loud input. Particularly the cheap ones as I expect this is. But we'll find out on playback, won't we? Give it some seconds and See what, if anything, we got. not made for recording music is it? We learned that. Let's take a moment to look at the little foot pedal control. K0872. Looks like there's some handwritten notes there. That this is the 108. I guess it could also be used on the 109 the person said. Um, plugs into the remote jack. And its default position is it stops the tape until you put your foot on it. Of course, I don't have it on my foot or we wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm pressing play. And you'll notice it's not going. So if uh, I was doing something and I didn't have the remote mic plugged in, wanted to listen to something, you would just press your foot down. And that releases the remote. ...have a significant impact in the calories you burn every second, every minute of the day, even when you are asleep. So as you release your foot pressure, it stops. Sort of scammy weight loss programs that say lose weight while you sleep. 
when it comes to stimulating and awakening your lean body tissue, stimulating it awake. That's quite a bit of pressure for my hand. I suppose in a situation where you're using your foot and all your weight, it would be much easier. But this is a uh, this takes some conscious thought here. Muscles by doing resistance training, and remember these muscles were designed to be our muscles. No. So I think I would probably rather use the on off on the mic remote for this, but I guess it was a nice accessory to have. Now, these are the primary things that... Well, there you go, from uh, 1967 and Magnavox. This has been the 1TC-108M. I don't think it was a very top-of-the-line model for them back then, but anybody with a cartridge recorder, before they called them cassette recorders for some companies, I guess, because there were other companies calling these cassette recorders at the time. But you were probably happy with it as long as you didn't want to record a lot of music or use it for high quality things. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.